Welcome to another broadcast of The Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past shows are archived and can be found in podcast form. Visit artistfirst.com. Have a question or comment, zap it to us at dj at artistfirst.com. And now here they are, seriously intelligent and wise people. We call them the wise ones. Michael and Margaret Lines. Stop it! Um, <laughs> thank you very much. This is the wise, not one. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, welcome to the show of the, uh, to the Soul of the Every Man. See, I'm not that wise. I can't even say the name of the show. I'm Michael Lines. And I'm Margaret. And tonight's show is about passion, which is what brings us here tonight. Every night, every week, we're here with passion. Indeed. <laughs> oh, and, and, and tonight's show is about passion, and passion is um, uh, passion is a is a term that is not well defined, and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about it. But in fact, um, you know, passion is what should drive you. Yes. Well, the minute you're born, you just want to live. You. You're passionate about being able to take that next step, excited about who you see around you. Your first breath. And from there on, how do do you work the body? What is this? What am I smelling? What am I seeing? Life. There's nothing more passionate than a two-year-old in search of a cookie. Oh, my. (laughs) That's the definition of passion. <laughs> when you are passionate about something, when you are a two year old in search of a cookie, you will spend every moment thinking about how to do it. You will you will you will concentrate better than you've ever concentrated before. You want that thing. You know, passion is driven by desire. Yes. Well, there's something that That's engaged you so completely that that's the only thing you think about. And when that happens, that's that's when you begin. It's it's a process. It's not just thinking, sitting there. And you, you, usually, it's a, especially if it's <laughs> if it's little boys, it's just go. Yeah. Well, I mean, literally, passion is not something that you you plot out meticulously. You throw yourself in to what you want uh, when you're passionate about it. You, you, you commit resources you didn't know you had. And it doesn't matter, you know, what you have to go through, you know, what, what the trial is, you know, what pain you may experience later. It's, you've, you've fixed upon something. You, you've become fixated. You've, You've said to yourself, you have committed yourself to say, I want that, and I don't care what it takes to get it. Well, well, it's not just a thing, though. Okay, passion is more of a process and experience. You know, it's not just focusing on this, I want that. It's, no, I want or living the experience and, and grasping it with everything you have. Yes. Uh, I, I don't mean that... that it, uh, well, uh, let's, let's talk about two different things. One can be passionate about, um, about a number of things all at once. One can, one can pursue uh, a... a um, you know, can, one can pursue one's life in a passionate way, you know, really living to the fullest, if you will. Um, one can, you know, uh, you're looking to achieve something, though, with passion, I believe. You're, 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 um, there's an, there is an object of your desire when you talk about passion, uh, because you need to have this, you need to have the ability to commit uh, yourself fully. And which, which which means you have to kind of eschew things which are not, which you're not passionate about, which may be important too, but they don't, they don't take the same, uh, 
when you know when the poets would talk about passion, they talk about it in in the way that it's a burning uh, desire that 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 it that it pushes away things like you know food or drink or or um, you know the, the mundanity of life. In other words, passion is what makes life worth living. It isn't paying your bills or or cooking food and eating because you have to, um, but it may be. Do it, you may be cooking and eating because you love to, because you want to make the best thing you've ever eaten and then try again to make something even better. You know, that's passion is a pursuit of something which is, um, which requires a lot of effort to get to. Well, it is the promise of fulfillment. Yes. Uh, that's why I say fulfillment is not in a thing. I would say that that people can be passionate about things which can be easily fulfilled, and passionate about something which which can never be fulfilled, which is an unattainable goal. Right, if, you, if you look at it in terms of a goal, but my point being, it's not always. Although for some people, I suppose it's a it's a solid touch of all thing. Well, I, I, I'll back up. I, I don't mean that it's a solid, touchable thing, but I, I believe that... You know, let's take for a, an example of somebody like Mother Teresa. She was a, a person who committed her life's work, her passion, was to um, feed the poor. Well, this is an unattainable goal. You can never finish feeding the poor. The poor will always be there. They'll always be hungry. Uh, but yet... You know what? The other thing about passion market is people recognize it in others. When you when you see someone who's acting with passion, it's attractive. Um, it's it's evocative. It has emotion. It has it has uh, uh, it has the same sort of attraction that a flame does. It's bright and it's and it's warm and it and it and it and it can bring and it can bring people to follow you because if your passion is great enough, you can actually end up inspiring that same sort of passion in others. Right. If you, um, if your life burns that way, yes. you, you have to be able to burn in that moment. And that's when you're passionate. Not, you know, this thing is going to fulfill me. Whatever the solid thing is, this is my point. It's experience. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mean to. Maybe you, you, you got stuck on on a on a goal as a thing or as a as a as a cookie, which is a two year old's passion. An objectification of a desire is not always a passion. N- no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it would. It would be, but um, it, it, passions. The 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 thing that we call passion can be directed at goals small and large at goals which are uh, which are never attainable they're never a goal actually they're just a purpose or they're they're a um, they're a calling you know uh, it, it, you can have a calling which you pursue passionately your whole life and you can never be fulfilled you can never be done you you can you could have a calling to learn you have a calling to write incredible music you'd have a calling uh, to um, you know to to try to be the best, an Olympic athlete or something, the, the, the pursuit of it, the pursuit of that thing is you're never ever going to, you know, be done with that. It isn't, it, it isn't something that you can say, well, uh, you know, now I've got the, um, you know, the X, Y, Z thing and I'm done. My passion's over. I can settle down and be happy. Um, it, it's, it's just to stop for digress for a moment. Passion is not about happiness. I think people get to get sort of caught up in that. They think, well, if, uh, if I get, you know, if I have this passion and then I get there, I'm going to be happy and I can be done. Sometimes passion is about being never fulfilled, but yet constantly um, desiring the thing that you that you have de- devoted your life to. You, you can never actually reach it, never actually attain it, but yet the pursuit is enough. It, it's it is it is it is the burning which is the which is right. That's my point. Well, I I'm agreeing yeah. with you. I'm agreeing. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing with you. It's understanding that the thing, as we have already gone into great discussion about, 
Things don't last. Nothing lasts forever. But the pursuit of passion, with passion, pursuing what it is that allows your heart to burn is something that goes into your eternal moments and your eternal memories. It is something that resonates through your soul not only the rest of your life, but memories that you bring with you when you cross over. Your, your what did you call it? Your experience? The, eter- the eternity bank. The eternity. Um, memories. Yes, the eternity bank. I can never figure that out. Um, but well, let's, let's back up a little bit. So I think when people talk about passion, um, they often get kind of bound up in, in some of these things that we've, we've kind of run, run around and, and, and kind of put on the table. Um, one thing people call, talk about passion, they talk about um, passionate love. Uh, they talk about sex as being passion. Um, they talk about, um, you know, a, 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 an obsession as being a passion. And um, there are certainly elements of of uh, of what we kind of broadly t- call passion in, in each one of those things, uh, but the uh, you know the the the, the overarching um, sort of the common thread among all of them, I I believe, is that you uh, I, I'll I'll just say that I think that when you are in when you're in a in passion, you have kind of lost your um you, you sort of you you've you've actually lost you you you're you're kind of you're kind of focused on something which is is has become larger than it than maybe it would have normally been in in someone else's life you you've you've become um You've committed yourself to it to such a great extent when you're in a when you're in a passion, uh, whether it's anger or you know the the, the that in essence it's a, it's a state of um, of transcendence. You know, it's not an ordinary state. Um, true, be, pa- true passion is an expression of the soul, in its pure form. By its nature, is trans is transcendent of everything that you see around you. Understand that when your expression goes out there, whatever manner in which your soul expression comes, there is a reverberation in the world around you. And that's why people can feel it from you. And that's why it seems so attractive. Because suddenly every part of you is united in this one point of burning. When you obsess about things, that is a mental, say they, people say it's mental passion, but it's engaging that mental part of your brain to play with things that way. Mm. You know, and there are people who are stuck in the physical passions where sex is the only thing, the physical sex has got to be constant. But they're not at a burning point that allows all of you to be there. You're you are so fully in the moment that nothing else matters. Everything is focused on the experience of this moment now Hmm. completely engulfed with that and just like fire engulfs on this physical plane fire also burns through and burns out Hmm. that's why your passion must be focused so that you can manage it and focus it and guide it into these Mm, what would be the word? Heartfelt structures that you you can bring 
not only into this world, but again, the memories into the next. Well, I, I think there's a lot, a lot of things. Too that, much. Sorry. Well, no, 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 no. It's all, very, we're, we're very passionate about this. Um, but no, I mean, I think where you began was, was that, you know, passion is not obsession. And, and it's a fine point. I love that fine point in that obsession is a mental um, it is it is a mental kind of machine. It's a machination. Obsession is something which, when you see it, you you see somebody whose um, whose uh, attention is is inordinately focused on something, and you say they're obsessed. You know, um, and and then there's something called possession. You know, which is in essence not passion either. We didn't talk about that, but but in essence, uh, to be completely possessed by an idea is also sort of a mental um, kind of of construct. But, but 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 the middle part, the middle, the, the part that you were talking about, the actual true exercise of passion, is not mental. It is of the heart. You know, when we talk about passion, we're always talking about um, emotion. But as you mentioned just at the end of your statement there, it's emotion like fire that you can't, that you must uh, constrict or at least focus. You can't, you know, passion can run wild. Passion can take people to the, the most heinous acts or the most, um, you know, uh, self-absorbed acts. Uh, but, but true passion is uh is is the all the force of the heart with a focus and then you say well that's sort of a mental thing well you know it's your it's your whole self here you, you know you we are we are body we are mind we are spirit we are heart we are emotion and we are we are all these things true passion burns but true passion is not um a forest fire which consumes all it can be, but that's you know that's out of control. Passion, passion does have to have a, a circumference of reason, a circumference of of control on it. Yes, just as a fire, you can. The analogy of passion to fire is is very succinct. Yeah. Because fire can destroy everything around it indiscriminately. And if you indulge in your passion enough, you will begin to think that you can't control it because you just give way to it. You've, what you've trained yourself to do is to just continually follow the whims of passion as mm. opposed to the focus and the, the, the source. If you think of... of fire's source as, as being like a sun. You have to be able to focus on all that because that's what's burning deep inside of you. Mm. The intersection of spirit and body is soul. But the soul, if you understand that the soul burns when you live. Mm. So to be able to guide that into channels where that energy is expressed in, in magnificent ways that the soul finds not satisfactory, but part of the creation. There's a joy, there's a deep inner joy when the soul partakes in the creation process of this world. And you mm. create with that fire there's there's a there's an echo of creation in passion you know when we talk about passion um we can also talk about creation because i think true creation is 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 harnessed passion is is passion is passionate in and of itself when you create whether you're creating life or children or art or, or something that is unique to you, even if it's just, um, you know, a, a life's work which can't be encapsulated in any one thing. But it's your, it's, it's the arc of your life lived passionately. It's a, it's an act of creation. It's as you said, 
something which outlives the individual spark. When you when you when you live your life passionately, it it grows beyond your your individual person. It can echo through the ages. Passion, which is encapsulated in in a, in a work of art. When you when you have children, you're throwing you're throwing these people into the future. They they are carrying on part of your passion, just as you carry on part of the passion of those who came before you. Um, so creation, I would postulate, or I would say, is is a uh, is an act of passion or a result of passion. Um, although, conversely, destruction can be an an act of unbridled passion. You know, passion which um, which overwhelms can also destroy. So, so passion is something which has a duality to it. Well, that's because of the perspective of the person that executes the the movement or the action. You know, then then it's either destructive or or constructive. But the human being himself has that body of of passion in his soul. That's that is the substance of of what it is to be down here. And you have a choice of how you're going to direct your passions, how, how you're capable of bringing yourself, your soul, to an even higher frequency of, of passion, of light, of love, even higher. I, I think there's something important there that you're moving by, maybe not, but I want to just point it out is you you said that that passion requires a choice, and I think that that's very important in essence, what you're saying is that you have passion and then you have a choice to create or destroy or how you use your passion um, so the choice is 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 something we've talked about many times is that is that moment at which you have the you are presented with a duality, you know, a decision, a decision. Uh, and so passion can be kind of, um, encapsulated in, in a moment by moment decision, much as, as your life is encapsulated in a moment by moment decision. What, what do I do now? What is the right? What is the wrong? What is and passion is you know what do I do with this passion? What frequency do I choose? Have I refined my inner passion to a point where I can reach the point of the sublime, which is heaven, or am I going to take a lower frequency of passion and just indulge in what is physical or mental or purely emotional? Well, um, let me let me let me back up. Do we get to choose the frequency of passion, or is passion channeled into lower or higher frequencies? Does passion isn't passion always at the, at the high energy, the highest en- of energies, and then you have to choose what you will put it into? Yes. The, what what you will give life with your passion? As far as I understand when it comes to energy or energy frequencies, energy bodies, purity of of who you are is is that spirit energy and it comes into this plane of existence which is a physical body and that interface is the soul and the soul is what burns. And that is where your decision lay. That's where your will resides. And the seed of the human soul is in the heart. That's where it sits. So at that point, you come to your heart and you make your decision. Have you refined your your experience down here enough to choose where you will channel your life's energy, your passion? That's the question we are always given. Yeah, I, I agree. And 
if you, if you say we're given the question, the the act is is answering it. Correct. Okay. So um, so we have the human being, and the human being is not just a you know a, a collection of 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 flesh and uh, a program to do things, stimulus and reaction. The human being has passion. You have the spark of creation. You have you have a you have a a burning flame, which is your, your we'll call it your soul. It, that 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 energy is yours to grow, uh, to to spend, to to share. And one of the things we haven't talked about with passion is that passion can be shared and it can grow between two as a part of a relationship. Relationships are fueled by passion. And it's not just passion of sex. That's great. Sex is great. Sex is great. Sex, sex, sex. Okay. Moving on. Passion <laughs> is, is more than, the, than just that. that it, it's, it's important, but, but the passion of relationship is also the, the, the flow of energy between two. It is, you know, you can have a singular passion. You can, by your own light and life, um, be a bright spark, be a, be a burning flame in creation and, and do many things. But to find another spark and to realize that you can, you can not just, you know, that, that, that two are not just one plus one, that, that, that the, the flame of passion between two, both, you know, both the, um, the two individual energies and the greater sum of the two plus the, 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 the all, the attraction, the, the greater energy of the two going back and forth becomes uh, an even more uh, fulfilling passion. You know, passion can be a fulfillment in and of itself because the, the, the execution of your passion can be a wonderful, amazing thing. You know, to share back and forth, to each have a flame and to realize that the two flames that come together create something even more than, than just those two um, is an amazing expression of passion. It's an expression of, of life. Yes. And the limitations that are down here are to teach us the necessity of being able to focus and harness the passion that is within us. And in order to do that, we do need divine help. Mm. And we're going to take a divine break. We're going to we're going to relax our passions. You listen to these wonderful commercials and we'll be right back to talk more about passion. The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed is the latest book from Michael Lines, the award-winning author of There is a Reaper. Featuring 13 original stories, this wide-ranging collection has everything. Forbidden love, gods versus demigods, weird invading aliens, sexy seductive artificial intelligence, and unusual passion between the living and the dead. All set amidst fantastic worlds of pain and loss and boundless joy. From the sublime to the macabre to the bittersweet, The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed will leave you breathless with laughter, brimming with tears, trembling with suspense. Available now on Amazon.com, Google Play, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. The Timeless Esoterica Radio Program with Dr. Bruce is broadcast on the fourth Monday of every month at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, on artistfirst.com. We explore topics including the paranormal, alien life, mysteries, conspiracies, hidden history, oddities, and much more. 
Each show will feature a special guest with exciting and thought-provoking discussion. Always keep an open mind, an open heart, live forever, and remember Dr. Bruce believes in you. Rick Rodan fans, love mythology with plenty of action and humor? Destroyer's Blood is for you. The new fantasy novel by award-winning author Michael Lines is book one of the adventures of Dev Kalian, the Blood series. Follow Dev and his magic sword betrayer as they are suddenly attacked and forced to return to Olympus to fight in a war they want no part in. The world of men and gods is about to be destroyed by Zeus's ancient foe, and only Dev and Trey can stop him. The conflict never stops, and the amazing twist will have you on the edge of your seat. Act now while the ebook is on sale for only 99 cents. Destroyer's Blood is available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. And while you're there, get the free prequel, It's In The Blood, available for a limited time. Hi, this is Minette Lauren, author of Race for the Sun. Do you believe in guardian angels? Check out book one of my Soul Watcher series. It can be found on Amazon.com or anywhere fine books are sold. Go to www.minettelauren.com and you are listening to the Artist First Radio Network. There is a Reaper is the story of five-year-old Christopher Aaron and his life-changing struggle with leukemia. Winner of both the Indie Bragg Medallion as well as the reader's favorite silver medal for memoir, There is a Reaper has more than 100 Amazon book reviews and a five-star rating. It has been described as life-changing, spiritual, a must-read. Just released on Audible and iTunes, this memoir is also available in paperback and on Amazon Kindle for only 99 cents. Get your copy of this life-changing memoir today. Listening to the soul of the everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. Let's get back to the wise ones. It's Margaret and Michael Lines. Uh, thank you, Scott. And yes, we are back for the second half of our program. And we've been discussing passion. And we spent the whole break <laughs> in, in some pretty hot discussion. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. Uh, but, but we could have. We could have because you know, passion doesn't need a lot of time. <laughs> Actually, passion can can be the um, uh, can be and should be uh, a lifelong um, a lifelong pursuit. And the passion, as we we were saying, Margaret, on the way out of the um, of the bottom half of the first half hour. Uh, we were talking about passion that's shared um, as part of a relationship. And and I would say that any good relationship, whether it's a relationship between, um, uh, you know, partners in life or a relationship between wonderful friends or a relationship between uh, you and your your kids or your parents or, you know, the, 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 the relationships which are the best um, – are ones in which there is some sort of shared passion. Well, here's a, if you find a great friend, you'll probably find that there are many things you can talk really easily about with them, that they have, that there's shared interests, that, that something that they do, you admire greatly, or that something that you do, they admire greatly. Well, these are shared passions. You know, uh, the things that, that enliven us, that, that make our lives work living, that give back more than they seem to take, that no matter how much effort you put into them, there's a reward of, of this, this energy returned. Mm-hmm. These are the things that, that are, uh, are part of your passion. Here's, here's another thing, Margaret. Passion, by its nature, echoes. You know, when you, when you throw something, when you throw your passion into something, you will often find that it, it gives back as much energy, if not more energy, than you throw into it. Um, you know, 
the the uh, there's a great quote which we didn't put up and we thought about putting up um, uh, from T.D. Jakes, who's a wonderful philosopher as well as a pastor. But um, it, you know, he basically says, if you don't know your purpose in life, is I'm paraphrasing, find your passion, and you will find your purpose. Uh, and what what that really is saying is that that the passion, if you find something which you which 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 you feel great doing, which is, is something that really makes you burn, it will also turn into, you know, maybe your life's calling or maybe part of your life's calling. You know, whether it's a person or a, uh, an idea uh, or a great work, you know, um, it, it, will, it will become something which drives you, which calls you forward and calls you into it and, and rewards you um, with the return of energy. And then, you know, people will then say, well, that's my life's purpose. I, I'm here to do, to feed the poor because that's what feeds my passion. Well, your soul, I think we had mentioned this before, when it enters into a room and into a situation, it doesn't, respond the same way your your mental ability might thinking you know someone come be, some people come into a room and they're thinking all the time and they want to think about what's in front of them and they want to put forth whatever they're thinking you know just people that just spill out whatever thought happens to come in their head but your heart doesn't do that when the heart enters into a situation it looks around and says, this is what I wish to engage in. Mm. And it will engage in it. And when you understand that that is the way that will show you how to begin to take a step in your own passions or what to follow, what to pursue, you will understand that it's not a mental game of ticking a box. For some reason, people think that ticking a box is a passion. And it's just ticking a box. You, you think you've done that, but inevitably there's something left undone. Hmm. There's those bucket list things. And when you're doing all of that, what do you get in the end except a piece of paper with check marks on it? You can't bring that to somebody and say, see, I've lived. Your eternity bank is not going to take that as, as currency. May I, that's, the wonderful, that's the phrase of the night. See, I've lived. Mm -hmm. Because if you if you are living with passion, no one will doubt that you've lived. Whether they, they, whether they understand your passion at all, they may say, you're crazy. But they, <laughs> you crazy. But, but, um, but they know that you're living life truly. It, it, you know, the, again, things of the heart are things which are true. They, have a, they, have, they, have, they ring true. They have a resonance to them. Passion rings true. I mean, you see someone who's so, so passionate about whatever it is, you know, collecting stamps or, you know, whatever. But, they're, you know, uh, Steve Irwin is a great example. You know, the poor, great, poor guy who's, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, killed doing what he wanted to do with his life. Now, would any of us want to do what he does? And probably not, you know, chasing through rocks and finding horrible, creepy monsters that eventually killed him. But that was his passion. And when you see somebody pursuing their passion whether you understand it or not there's a, there's a there's a um there's a resonance there you can say well yeah, there if you what you just said is you see i've lived i've checked off all the boxes that's dead it, it, it has nothing it has no echo it's almost um it's almost formulaic it's meaningless and and if if you see someone who has just checked off all the boxes in life you you say to yourself well you know what what have you actually done? You know what have you? Where's where's your where are your scars? Where's your where's your 
Um, you How know, has this changed your life in any way? Well, For if you live, you burn. And in that burning process, you are transformed. So how has this transformed you? If there is no transformation, then you must stop and take stock. Because it it means that you may not have engaged in something that the heart found fullness in. Mm. Because the heart engages in things to be part of a fullness of being. And when you realize that you live life very differently, the check boxes, which is pretty much what, you know, we, we do just to get through the day because there's certain things that, certain tasks that need to be executed. Yeah, got to buy milk. But when you come to a point where you actually live and have a memory to put someplace, put in that eternity box. You have to understand that a part of your soul was burning in that point. And when it burns, it burns the memory in. That's why I love the phrase, uh, and it's... I believe it's Jesus who said this, that your name is burned into my heart. Mm. When you are in relationship with another person, their being is burned into yours. You're changed because of that relationship. It is like saying that representation, that name of you is burned into my heart, burned into my soul. I'm forever changed because... Okay. Well, I, and I think to unpack it, you, you're exactly right. Um, passion, you always say it burns and it changes. It, it, it will, it transform. will transform. It will, it will make you be a different you. Uh, when you say I've lived my life and you have your check boxes, you 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 don't have anything that's actually caused you to change. You've changed the paper by putting check boxes on it. Passions superficial. Superficial. Passions change you. They 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 scar you. They um they take you places that you they they cause you to learn. Passion causes you to change and to learn. Um experience uh, it it causes pain and then passion, and then learning. You, you are different when you've come through something and you've lived it with passion, your life or any experience. You're not the same person. You can look back and say, and, and very often this is language and forms, I'm, not, I'm a different person now because I knew you and I lost you, or I knew you and, and, I, and I found you. I, I, you know, I am, you know, it's still the me, but the me has become a different me. Uh, I'm, I've been molded, shaped. Part of me has been lost. Part of me has been found. When you live, pain is inevitable. This is part of the well, life is suffering that Buddha was talking about. There you go. And you have a choice at that moment. Do I avoid the pain? Or do I push through, find something else? And passion is truly part of that. Passion gets you through the pain. Hmm. That's the only thing that can carry you through sometimes because you are in such a horrible place. that is completely out of your control. But the love, the passion that's there, whether it be for the person or for purpose, carries you through. Hmm. You are changed by it. You can you can be forced to grow. You can be forced to lose. Um, you can... Uh, 
you can find out that what you thought was important isn't through all these things through passion. You can find out that what you thought was unimportant is incredibly important. All these things through passion. Um, you know, passion, Margaret, maybe a nice way to put it is, is, is passion is the way your soul gets molded. Or rather, when your soul is being molded, it's a passionate moment. Um, whether, you, whether you're whether you doing it or whether it's being done to you, whether circumstances are inflicting, molding upon your soul and you have to, you have to, you have to spend the burning. You know, when things are burned, they are also transformed. Um, we say that they can be burned away, but they can be, they can be melted and recast and molded and shaped. You know, your soul, it has to, it has to flow and it has to expand. Well, those are processes that, that you do to something to, to form it. If you take a block of metal, you, you heat it up, you give it a lot of passion you whack it with a hammer. You move it and mold it and shape it. And then it's something different at the end. And it, that soul or that block of metal knows it's had some passion put on it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm going to put some passion on you. I'm going to, <laughs> you know, if, if, you're going to, if you're going to be passionate, you're not going to be the same. And so check, the checkboxes are safe, right, Mark? They're safe. You're not going to get transformed by a bunch of checks boxes. You're going to say, oh, yeah, that was fun. Um, well, that was, in <laughs> other words, I, I did that, and I didn't have to burn to do that. You didn't have you to know. learn or to burn. Right. You, you know, I don't have to change. I'm comfy to where, I, where I'm at. I'm going to just do that and see. I've done this and this and this and this and here. You remember our wonderful friend, your wonderful friend, who, who, who one of the things she thought is that you didn't have to go through pain in order to learn. Yes, that was always a debate between the two of us. But as far as I understood from everything I went through, you had to go through pain in order to change. She thought that just by thinking that you can change, you would be able to change. It's a lovely conceit. She never consulted her heart on that one. No. Because the heart understands that it's only through that burning that things transform. Well, you just said it before that, you know, writing your name on your heart, writing, you know, burning the name into the heart is also changing that heart. And if you're going to change your heart or put a memory in your eternity box, box, I was almost there. I was going to get it. Um, The eternity bank. Damn. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. That was listen, my, my mistake. That that eternally thing bank that we stuff stuff in it changes. You, you know, you, your heart is broken, is opened, is pierced. You know, when when people say I'm in a passionate love, my my heart was pierced with passion. Yes, because that's. It's opened. You know, the other thing, we, we, we're running out of time, of course, this passionate thing. When you open your heart, you, it's a passionate act, you know, because you're, you're opening it and changing it and allowing it to burn and to be, and to be vulnerable. You know, the other thing about passion is it's vulnerable. The definition of pain is that you've reached your limit. Your heart the old boundaries have suddenly become too small for the immensity of the love and the passion that is engulfing it. And so it hurts. It hurts, but it changes you. Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, uh, you know, it, it, passion, when, if, you're, if you're opening your heart, you're also um, making your heart soft, you know, but you know, we love language when language informs. Uh, hardening your heart, it's not a passionate act. It's an pack- act of denying passion. Passion is, is a heart which is, which is being opened. It's a heart which is being pierced, being, being transformed, being you know, expanded. Um, these are all acts of passion. Well, hard-hearted means that there's no... It's a cold heart. There's nothing to burn. It's just a lump of lead. 
Well, <laughs> there's another one for the, for the language for the eternity bank thing. Uh, a, a cold-hearted person is not a person who's passion. You know, when we talk about passion, we're always talking about hot or or um, something which is which has, as we set up, a fire and a passion. Cold-hearted is is the antithesis of passion. It's somebody who's calculating, who's checking off the boxes. Um, you say he has he has no heart. He has no passion. He has no heart. So these are these 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 phrases reflect what what people have felt over the centuries, over the mm-hmm. many centuries. You know the 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 heart of the poet is the heart that burns. Um, the heart of the lover is again the heart that burns. You're burning with love. You're burning with with words. And you know when something that you're either going to do or make or when it's not right because your heart is not in it. Mm, your heart's not in it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it. That's the other thing we mentioned uh, about finding your, your purpose. Um, when you find your passion, you found where your heart is, what your heart is in. Having your heart in something it's also a way of saying that you're you fully committed your life energy your life force is involved now mm-hmm. you know um you're playing with your heartbeat <laughs> to some some extent you are you know if you're if you're burning passion you're burning at, at the at the burning passion of your life you, you are playing a risky game you know you're putting yourself out there you're you're allowing people to to see that that here is a is a uh, a way to hurt me through my passion. My passion is also vulnerability. It's also um, it's strength and in essence a weakness. Because you say if you really want to hurt somebody, you hurt their passions. You hurt what they love. Um, you know, so love is 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 a passion which shows people where you live. You know, where your heart really is is what you love and. You can get great reward, and you can also be greatly hurt by by something that is that you put your passion into. You know what, what's the greatest disappointment if you put all your passion into somebody and and you're rejected? If you you you've you've spent your life's work on something and it's destroyed because you put a lot of passion into that person, a lot of passion into that thing, or into that pursuit. And and it can be lost. This this is this is a okay. I um I am not there with that because it's again that's the objectification of the the thing. It's back to a thing again. The thing that that's no, made. No. What I'm saying is that it's putting something in, putting your life into putting your passion into a project a, a purpose a person in itself is its own expression because when you do that you you're giving life to this other person and they have got to make their own decisions or you've created something say you created an organization it's got a life of its own. And as a parent, you have to let go. You may be disappointed, but it doesn't mean that you're, you're um, destroyed or... Well, you know, I, I, maybe, I, I, maybe I see what you... Well, what I'm trying to say is the, the things that will change you will be... Um, how your passions, how you prosecute your passions, whatever they are, how you how you live, how you how you, because passion is an expression. It's it, passion just completely contained within the heart, which has no expression, is there, but it, it, you're not getting changed there. You have to you have to you have to pull it out and use it to do something, whatever it is. You know, you have to allow yourself to be changed. You have to open your heart and allow your passion to flow in order in order, in order to be changed. And I'm just all I'm saying is is that this is not something which is a safe passion is not safe. Th- these things over here are safe. Checkboxes are safe. You're not going to get 
you, you're not going to learn anything, but you're also not going to risk anything over here in this mental kind of construct. Pain, which is what, how you actually learn things, is not safe. Um, passion is not safe. It's, it's dangerous. It's vulnerabilities. It's um, what you thought you knew is not. Right. And that's what you're you're going to find out. You you're risking stuff when you're, you're passionate. You're you're risking you you are risking something so basic and so dear which is your own identity. Identity, exactly. And it is a journey. That is the true journey of finding out who you really are. Yes. Living your life. Your soul expression with passion. On the ed- uh, living, as they say, on the edge of of triumph or destruction, but you don't know which one it is. And if you did know, it's less risky. Part of part of the of the thrill of passion is the unknown. Um, when you meet someone new and you find that you have a, you're going into a relationship with, there's a there's a, there's a passion which is is both how will my heart be received? How will my energy be echoed? Um, and then as you learn more about each other, as you trade back and forth, there's still always always the difference, always the mystery, always the risk. Because the other thing about passion, Margaret, is um, what was that great phrase? I said I loved you. It was 30 years ago. I, I, I said I loved you. <laughs> you know, I'm just... Yeah. I, I haven't say, like I haven't changed my mind. All right, I haven't changed my mind. Do I have to say it every day? Yes, with with passion, it requires constant expression and constant back and forth in relationship and constant risk. You know, um, relationships are are passionate and fresh and new only to the extent that you keep putting more energy into them and expecting energy back out, and. Um, that the the risk of a relationship to have a passionate relationship with somebody I'll try and get this succinctly 30 years on it should be just as risky as it was the first time you met them in the in the sense that you're still putting your heart out there and looking for their heart and if you're not putting your heart out there and looking for their heart you you you're, you're getting cold hearted your relationship is is getting more distant it's no longer a hot burning love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> we got a hot burning love here, and I think we're 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 running out of hot burning time on the soul of the every man. So we are passionate about this show. You should listen to it every week. And I'm Michael Lyons, <laughs> and I'm Margaret. Thank you <laughs> for listening. For listening.